It's a huge installation of 60 televisions. Uh, we have concealed speakers all around the gallery and then later on in the evening there's going to be a uh, performance featuring the films and the um, legendary Kraut Rockers Lust Faust. Hi Kami is a, it's two things. It's a film by a director, an Italian director called Jesus Rinzoli. It was made in 1980 and it's disappeared from circulation ever since. So one of the things we're doing today is we are rescoring that live. The other, the second thing, like me, is, is it's a, a product of our collective imagination and that it is a film that we've made um, in a collage way by adding existing film clips to one another and then rescripting the kind of summation of that collage and then rescoring it <laughs> and that's also what we'll be presenting tonight. We need things that, that make an impact and change the environment every time so that the, the space is constantly in flux. Uh, and James is one of those people that, that responds to that sort of thing incredibly well. So um, the idea is that we have 60 domestic televisions, all of a similar kind of size and age that relate back to the period in which um, as video nasties were made, which was you know the late 70s, the early 80s. Loosely speaking, the kind of period of time we're talking about with these films is is almost 25 years. So from <laughs> mid 60s to the to the uh, late 80s. What I kind of like from watching a lot of these films is some of them just totally bizarre, and they're kind of I think much more faithful to the whole concept of how people's imaginations take them if they're not bound by any controlling uh, monetary aspect. And I quite like the spirit that kind of comes from that. Even if the material itself is quite disgusting and like the shittest end of the kind of cultural spectrum, I think the fact that people are doing something is quite positive. One of my favourite films, for example, is The, uh, the Sinful Dwarf, which is a, a Swedish-produced film from, I think, 71, 72. It's about a, um, a sadistic dwarf who imprisons women and forces them into prostitution by making them addicted to heroin in the attic of the house he lives in with his mother. You don't really see films like that much anymore. We had a gap in our programme for a large-scale summer spectacular and he seemed like, like the obvious candidate. He's got a track record of working well with kind of private galleries and also public institutions, so he understands that, that dynamic of working with an audience. It's, it's very important for us to have high-profile artists showing in the fish market right on people's doorsteps so they don't have to travel to Birmingham or Manchester or London to go and see excellent world-class work. The real emphasis was to, to engage a process where we'd make something new, something that would be interesting in its own right, but in doing that it would be a kind of a document of the genre and of the genre type and of the construction of that genre and what substantiates it being identified as a genre. So what, you know, what are the ingredients of a you know, an 80s slasher film or a 70s jello film and that's essentially in the gallery what you see each of those monitors is allied to one of those particular scenes so really what you see in this installation rather than the finished film or the finite film is is a, a kind of composite of the film's construction uh, as a you know more of a working document rather than a kind of finished thing what you get is that sense of the movies um, that kind of archetypal movie we all know all of the composite parts and we all know how they fit together so in a sense as you walk around you piece the film together yourself because all of these films are basically the same it's it has its own val validity as a new film so that's kind of where you start to unpick this notion of authorship and ownership and you know who's, who's really the author of these works they're all part of the same genre, they all have the same beginning, middle and end, and they all have the same kind of hooks and what have you. One of the nicest things about these films are they're, they're lost. Yeah. They're kind of almost the effluent of proper culture. They're historical artefacts, but they're historical artefacts that can have a relationship to now, because they, they've been so historically maligned that no one's ever really paid that much attention to it. As you hear someone scream in the background. <laughs> this fast were a... Uh, were a proto industrial noise band from Germany towards the end of the 70s and the beginning of the 80s. Uh, they, they were uh, active in Berlin, uh, a bunch of session musicians who came together under, under accidental circumstances and kind of enjoyed playing together and uh, kind of what they 
saw as challenging the boundaries of, of music at the time. Back in the 70s, you would have um, bands that couldn't really afford to release all of their music through a record label. So they would ask their fans to do adverts in magazines to send blank tapes with um, decorated covers. And then the band would take the blank tape, put the music on it and post it back to them. So all of this work and, um, and stuff from the, the Lost Fans project, the tape cassettes, all kind of relate to that sense of big fan communities and um, kind of, what's well, like a rudimentary version of file sharing, really. The thing that appeals to me about this and all of the, the posters in this is that there is the quality of this being like an academic exercise. Okay, let's imagine this band and how they, uh, how they might have evolved. But instead of being a kind of dry procedure, there's so much of the joy of making and the, the, the business of dealing with stuff, which, um, which artists love to make and people love to look at. It was kind of interesting two or three days ago when we first set the whole thing up. And that was the first point I'd actually ever seen all of this material together in the context that we display. And I, I was surprised by it. I was surprised by how full on it was. For the purposes of this show, we've got a new power circuit rigged up which produces enough power to power two small houses. So yeah, to say this has been a technical, huge technical mountain to climb is a massive understatement. It's been, it's been quite phenomenal. Let the festivities begin. I'm sure it's What I'd like to happen within the thing is that people become reacquainted with this material and secondarily people become reacquainted with what drove the initial impulse for these films to exist, which to me nowadays seems like we don't have a culture that can provide for this type of material because this material is dependent on a larger culture not taking care of certain members of society. So you have subculture and counterculture. And I think the culture now is so plutocratic and democratic that you know, the whole notion of camp culture is part of mainstream culture. So these films genuinely did set outside of what was the norm. Thank <laughs> you. 